What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing the next DLC coming to Destiny 2 with the annual pass, Penumbra, or the Season of Opulence. What will this DLC be about? What are some of the new and returning exotics coming with this DLC? Well, let's talk about it. Now, there has been a leak, and this leak is pretty interesting. Why? It's from Anon the Nine. Now, this guy is like the premier leaker within Destiny. Pretty much everything he leaks turns out to be correct. Now, some things do change from when it's leaked, then when the game actually launches. Some things are dropped, some things are moved around. So the information today, you know, it can't always be 100% accurate, but it should be pretty accurate. And this is a collection of some of the things he said about Penumbra, made on old Discord posts and so on, and compiled in a Reddit post, which will be linked in the description down below if you want to check out the original source. So, let's talk about this. Firstly, in terms of the overall story of this expansion, we return to the Leviathan and discover the source of Emperor Callus's power. This is also the first tease of the darkness enemies to be introduced in Destiny 3, and was also teased in the Drifter's lore entry about creatures on an ice planet that he found. So, of course, we knew that Penumbra was absolutely connected with Emperor Callus, the Leviathan, and exploring more about that entire situation. Emperor Callus himself, the Cabal likely, all that stuff. But, this whole thing about a new enemy faction, at least, that's going to be teased and is going to be more prominent in Destiny 3, that's really interesting. If that's true, that's really cool. Because if there is a Destiny 3, there's likely to be a new enemy faction. I, I wouldn't imagine that they launch Destiny 3 with the same Cabal, Fallen, Hive, and I guess Taken that we've seen a million times before. They're likely trying to spice things up. So from that regard, that all makes sense. But also, if they're already teasing stuff for Destiny 3, does that mean Destiny 3 is right around the corner? Well, I definitely wouldn't expect a fall 2019 release date. But maybe 2020 is looking a little bit more possible if they're already planting the seeds for Destiny 3. However, it could also be further than that and they just want to get some hints in at this point in time. Okay, so that's kind of the overall story, simplified of course, about what's going on in Penumbra. But what are some of the new weapons coming with this expansion? Well, again, according to this leak, we have got three. Rose, Hawkmoon, and and Dark Drinker. Now, Hawkmoon and Dark Drinker are returning from Destiny 1, and if any of you aren't familiar with these weapons, let's go over them quickly. Hawkmoon. This was the third in the trio of completely overpowered Year 1 hand cannons. There was the Thorn, which we already got back, the Last Word, which we already got back, and so finishing off that trio would be the Hawkmoon. Now, what the Hawkmoon did in Destiny 1 was that it had a perk, Luck in the Chamber, and that made it so that a random shot from the magazine would do more damage than normal. Now, the Hawkmoon's exotic perk made it so that another round in this magazine would also deal additional damage. So, two rounds in a magazine would deal substantially more damage than normal. And... When it first started out in year one, it was capable of having both of those lucky shots combine in one super powered round and you could actually one shot headshot people with that gun. Now that changed later on, but still it was bloody awesome. Now how will it return in Destiny 2? Well, we don't exactly know. It could return almost exactly like it was in Destiny 1 or we could see Bungie do what they did with the Thorn and add a unique twist to that weapon. Anyways, it is interesting, it is returning, and hand cannon fans will definitely rejoice. Moving on from there, the Dark Drinker. Now, this is actually an exotic sword from Destiny 1. There was a trio of exotic swords. One was Void, one was Solar, and one was Arc. This is the Void one. Now, the Dark Drinker, its exotic perk in Destiny 1, allowed you to basically hold out the sword and spin around in circles. Any enemies within that 360 degree radius would be damaged. Now, the cool part about this is that for specific bosses, notably the final raid boss in the Wrath of the Machine raid, 
because you would be spinning around and hitting everything around you. If there was a large boss that had multiple hitboxes, you could be hitting like two legs of a boss at the same time and doing way more damage than you were supposed to. So perhaps we can have scenarios like that reemerge if that's introduced into Destiny 2, which is cool. Now, as for the rose, frankly, not too much is known about it. It's mentioned sparingly within the lore, and it doesn't have the epic tales of, you know, the thorn versus the last word in an epic duel, which did happen in the lore. The thorn is alluded to, it's mentioned, but not outright talked about. And so it has this mysterious aura. Does it really exist? Did the rose turn into the thorn? Is the rose still its own separate weapon? All of that stuff. But frankly, although lore fanatics would be very happy to finally get some more information on this gun, for the rest of us, it's just going to be a brand new hand cannon. Moving on from there, we have a little bit of information about activities. What are the new activities coming with this expansion? Well... Back in the day when leaked information was coming out about Joker's Wild, Mamba was the code name for Gambit Prime. Now, Penumbra has another code name for its activity, its pinnacle activity, and it is called Dragon Slayer. And it's said that a new game mode that blends puzzle solving with wave-based combat akin to Prison of Elders, comparable to an escape room. So that's very interesting. And we do know from the roadmap that there's going to be a new six player activity with Penumbra. That's one of the coolest features. Finally, something else you can do besides raiding and PvP with six people. Is Dragon Slayer that six person activity? Well, it's quite likely. And its description does sound interesting. You have to fight off a wave. Maybe you have to send some of your six man fire team to go and figure out a puzzle. Now, what will that puzzle entail? You know, shooting the right symbols based on clues. Will it be uh, achieving some sort of mechanical success over something? Like uh, when I think of a raid puzzle, I think of stuff in Spire of Stars, like figuring out where to stand in the different symbols to destroy the ships and all of that stuff. They could start taking those raid like style mechanics and challenges and kind of import them in probably a watered down version into this six player activity. So I'm interested to see what actually happens when it's introduced. Of course, the first question I have is replayability. If you figure out these mechanics and puzzles, are they just gonna be like three rotating puzzles? So once you solve all three, you're good for the rest of time or are we going to have to change every single time? Is there going to be randomized clues and a semi-randomized puzzle every single time? That's another really interesting thing to think about. In any event, that's the information that came out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.